Well, I'm here with Barry McGuire. We're really thankful <laughs> that uh, you came, that you're here we with us. We had fun today. It's I, been a great you, day. I love your heart, man. Yeah, it's been I a great really day. Do. You know, we got this uh, auto show uh, going on as we have these revivals, and when we were thinking about the perfect person to bring to this, Barry McGuire, you were at the top of the list. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've had such a blast today. Yeah. That's a serious car show for yeah. a church. Yeah. I, I go to church car shows often. Yeah. Uh, none of them compare with this. This yeah. thing has legs. I mean, this That's is good. this is beginning something I think even bigger than what you're seeing here. Yeah. Today. So Let's congrats. Hope. I think a lot of work. Year. That's right. A lot of work. I can appreciate how yeah. much work went in to make that all happen yeah. today. So, well, you know, I, I want people to know a little bit more about who Barry McGuire is, and so uh, just tell us a little bit about your um, business ventures. You know, how you got in. Well, involved. I'm a car guy. You know, I'm a car guy. I'm here because I'm a car guy. Yes, um, uh, my grandfather started our business in 1901. It's called McGuire's. We make car wax and all kinds of car care products. He was a praying man, and uh, it's a fascinating story how God led him in Evansville, Indiana. Oh yeah, uh, not far from here. Really creating the first car polish. I mean, it, it became a carriage polish. Yeah. You know, the first, over half of the horses carriage manufacturers at the very beginning back in 1901 were in Indiana. Okay. And they all started using his product. Then he moved out to California in 1913. And that's where the car hobby was birthed really after World War II. Yeah. And all the car guys knew about our products and just kind of went global. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather and my dad were focused on car dealers and body shops. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were they were they were passionate about creating a product that will create a perfectly clear finish. Mm. For, started with furniture polish. My granddad had that on a focus on furniture. Okay, yeah. black lacquer furniture happened all because that's what those carriages probably were. Well, right? it, 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 as it happened, yeah. the horses carriage manufacturers had the same black lacquer, so yeah. people without his permission started taking the same product. Yeah and put it in the carriages. His French price became a carriage polish. He moves to California, it's all a God thing. Yeah. And then we're right there where the car hobby takes off and I'm right at the right time in my teenage years where I watched that happen and then begin going to car shows. And finally, I, I had a, a meeting with the family one day in 1969. Yeah. And I said, I think God has given us a wonderful opportunity here to go retail. They said, we're not going retail. Yeah. But here we are, we're not going retail, we're a professional brand. Yeah. And I said, well, actually, Car guys are, are pseudo professionals because they want the best finish oh, yeah. they can, you can get. See, you can see it all here. And They're they'll like read the directions. So and they don't care about price. Yeah. They're our kind of guys. They reluctantly said yes, you yeah. know. So then I had this opportunity to go retail. I knew how to buff a car. I didn't have a clue about retail. Yeah. And I'm in my 20s. I'm just a young kid, you know. And so it's just I was I was brought up in the church. I was taught well. Yeah. Um, and at a Christian college. And so I came out of college with this, with Proverbs 3, 5, you know, well, trust the Lord with your whole heart. Yeah. Don't depend on your own intelligence right. and all your ways acknowledge him and this great promise, I will direct your path. Yeah. And um, I, I had no problem with that. I said, God, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. So I don't have any problem leaning on my own understanding. Yeah. I need you. And then yeah. he just started bringing people in our life yeah. and people in my life and people in my life. And who knew? I mean, now we've yeah. ended up being the top brand of appearance car care products. Yeah. And uh, well, we, you know, it's just have... been one miracle after another. I've just, I mean, I've worked really hard for yeah. a lot of years. You got to work it, yeah. but I had to work to keep up with God, yeah. you know. But you have 32 years of double digit growth in the business. And, and the pressure that puts on you financially uh, from operations, how do you create that much product? Yeah. How do you add your production? Yeah. And you were leading the organization so, for and that I'm, long. I'm the president of the company, yeah. so uh, doing all that has been quite a ride. Yeah. But I get to tell you, I look back and say, if God was there every time, I yeah. can tell you so many miracle stories when I was on the edge. Um, I knew he was going to be there. I, I, unwavering faith. Yeah. You know, he said, if you don't have unwavering faith, you're double-minded. Yeah. Don't expect to receive anything. That's right. So how do you get to unwavering faith where you just know? Yeah. And I found the secret to that. Maybe I'll tell you in a minute yeah. if you ask me the right well, question. Well, you know, <laughs> this product that you got, it's really amazing. You know, I have uh, two bottles in my... You do? Uh, yeah, I use that stuff all the time. When There's one that you use in between car washes. Yeah. I yeah, use that. Yeah, and quick then, detailer. Yeah. And then there's Everybody another one, detailer, and yeah. I use that as well, and uh, get my bikes looking great. So I'm really thankful for your products. We had, we had some fun out there. Yeah, we, we, we used sure the products did. today. Right. And, uh, they're putting bottles in their, in their engine compartments and stuff. For yeah, you know, see. but so speaking of like this car show, you know, nowadays there's uh, car shows everywhere and churches yeah. are doing it, different Thousands. organizations. But uh, there was a time when the car hobby industry was dying. Well, yeah, so yeah you, go back, you go back about 30 years and, you know, I'm the generation of the car hobby and, and because I'm the generation, it was dying out and it wasn't recreating right, itself. Yeah. 
and we the you know motorsports has sanctioning bodies they just spend more money they open right. up new races they can they have a, they're a marketing machine, yeah but what's right? a what's a couple guys that love but cars car hobby is totally grassroots and right. the grassroots wasn't working anymore where a couple guys come together and they start wrenching and they like the car and they get another car like it and they have a car show and they start a club and whatever so we go back 30 years ago the car hobby the car shows were were um having poor attendance car clubs were disbanding yeah. and it was terrible and so I had a gal in my, in my office who said, we need to do a, a TV show. I said, TV show? She said, there's a new channel starting called Speed Vision. Yeah. Which was a car guy started just for car guys. And you know you know Phil Hill, you know George Barrison, Gene Winfield, you know all these car guys. And you know their stories and you can interview them and, yeah. and they can share their passion. People get excited yeah. about what they're all about. So basically 18 years. That's fantastic. TV show called Car Crazy. Car Crazy and then going to Discovery and went worldwide. Yeah. And grew our products, of course. But I was really focused on getting people to be better people. The world is just so troubled. And I got to tell you, car guys, it's a pretty neat com community. Yeah. Car yeah. guys are, they're more giving, more generous, more caring. I mean, yeah. if you break down the side of the road, you won't be there five minutes right. until you have two or three car guys under your car helping yeah, you fix the car, awesome. you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just a wonderful hobby. So I love being a car guy. Yeah. I often say in churches, you know what? I have a lot of uh, car guy friends who are not Christians yeah. that are living scripture yeah. <laughs> more powerfully than a lot of my Christian friends, yeah. you know? Yeah. What and Jesus then, teaches and about then, then I often say in car clubs in different places where I go, I get to speak at kind of large car guy events. I say, you know what, you know, I'm a Christian. And I got to tell you, you guys are the best. If you could earn your way into heaven, yeah. you'd be at the front of the line. Yeah. But you can't earn your way into heaven because none of us are perfect. Yeah. None of us are good enough. Yeah. And that's why God had to send that's Jesus right. to, search to die for our sins. Yeah. And so yeah. um, it's not about what we did, it's about what yeah. he did. Yeah. So the two cross over really, really yeah. well. And uh, I'm a passionate car guy and the real deal. Yeah. But, but I, you know what? I figured this out a little while ago, quite a while ago. A hundred years from now, it's not going to matter how many bottles of car wax I sold. Yeah. Or how many cool cars I saw. That's or right. how many car you shows You can't take any to, of it with you. Or how many people I made into car guys. Yeah. It won't even matter if I'm conservative or liberal yeah. or, or American or Russian. Yeah. The only thing's gonna matter 100 years from now, did you accept Jesus Christ yeah. as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. And I've had the privilege to a lot of car guys. I have a deathbed experience with so many car guys, including George Barris. George Barris, the most famous car guy ever, yeah. globally, would have nothing to do with God. I ministered to him. I, I just loved on him for almost 50 years. Yeah. He ended up with a brain tumor, and then he wanted to talk. Wow. At the end of his life, he realized and he accepted. Wow, the last awesome. words were, God saved me. That's awesome. His last words. I mean, I think God, George, awesome. if, if you're a car guy, you always wore this gold jacket. Yeah. I picture George walking around with his gold jacket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. Right, right. He lived his life. Yeah. But you know, he's like the thief on the cross. Right. You, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. you, you can't earn your way into heaven. Yeah. It doesn't matter where we are in our life. Yeah. We always, as long as we have a breath, we yeah. can we can recognize that we're a sinner. Yeah. The wage of sin is death, but the, but the gift of God That's is right. eternal life. Yeah. Well, we're going to get an opportunity to that. hear you talk about that, yeah. you know, in just a little bit as well. But uh, just uh, wrapping up, you uh, felt a strong calling from God to start something else. So tell us a little bit about this revival outside the walls. What's, well, what's that um, you know, I've been sharing my faith um, all my life. Um, I, I wanted joy. I wanted joy in my life. I was doing a lot of fun things and, and volunteering for everything in the church. I was a busy Christian. I was sacrificially giving stuff. We always have done that. I didn't have any joy. Yeah. And I finally met this guy at, at a luncheon. He was a speaker. I sat next to him. And he was the most joyful person I did. He was just so excited. Yeah. He was the legal affairs secretary for Governor Reagan. Mm. And I want to hear all about Reagan. He never mentioned Reagan and I mm. never asked him. He was telling me one story after another about how he was just moving people close to Jesus. Mm. Everywhere he went, his whole world was a mission field. And the joy overwhelmed me. And I walked away and I said, I want that. Yeah. That's I, I want what he has. Yeah. Everybody should be looking at us saying, I want what he has. What is, what yeah. is that? Why are you so joyful? Yeah. There's a powerful word here. That I, that I just heard recently that so explains it. We can be happy about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. We can be happy about the winning the game last night or that, man, that meal, I like food. You know, that, wow, that was a great meal. We can be happy about our, our kid and he shot the three-pointer at the end of the game. There's so many things to be happy about. That's not joy. Yeah. Happiness is an emotional experience. Joy, joy is spiritual fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And we're living in the sweet spot with God yeah. where God wants us. Yeah. 
we have joy. And yeah. it doesn't matter what happened. I've been through hell. Man, the stuff yeah. that's come against me, I was toast so many times. And so this and revival had, outside I've the walls, you've been afraid. taking so this out. God spoke to me and he says, I'm gonna give you ministry separate apart from your business. And he gave me instructions yeah. literally how to do it. And we have this ministry revival outside the walls yeah. now. So you go to ROTW.com. ROTW.com. Yeah. And okay. then we create a new site, Ignite. I don't want to confuse everybody. We create a site without our name on it. And it's just to create community for people sharing their faith. You can't give money. You, it's not yeah. about money. It's just about a, 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 a yeah. vehicle for people sharing their faith, can talk to other people just like themselves, awesome. sharing their faith. Yeah. And it gives them all the tools, how sharing your faith does not rarely get people on their knees and praying through. It's every everybody around us is lost. Yeah. The world is lost. Yeah. And he says, they'll know you're my disciple by your love. If you yeah. just love on people right. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So often we're being good people, but they don't connect that to God. Yeah. We always have to connect it to that's the right. Lord. Well, you're uh, having a huge impact. And I can just see, you know, as you're talking about joy, I can see that that's happening. And so we're really thankful that yeah. you're with us. We're going to hear your fun. story in a little that's bit. That's mission field. That's there. right. Our whole life. That's every, right. Every moment, every day. That's right. Everything we do and say every day, every moment of the day, moves people closer yeah. or further away from God. Yeah, that's right. You know, so, so that's that's our that's our mission. So in closing, check out <laughs> yes. Revival Outside the Walls, ROTW.com. <laughs> yes. Thank you, you so it. much. <laughs> Thank you, Yossi. Right. God bless.